Dear friends, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can play uh, with and against the Karo Khan variations. Um, as you all know, uh, but first let me flip the board as uh, Karo Khan opening is primarily a Black's opening. So you all know Karo Khan opening is identified by uh, C6 against, uh, uh, against White's E4 move. Uh, in previous video, we have already looked at the classical variation where white responds with d4 and black responds with d5 uh, where white develops his knight at c3 uh, where d takes e4 knight takes e4 and bishop attacks on the onto the next knight from uh, f5 and so in classical as you know the knight goes back to g3 attacking onto this uh, bishop so bishop will uh, you keep the bishop onto this diagonal and but retreat it back to g6 where white tries to attack onto this bishop from this rank uh, from the h file in classical variation black also developed this uh, g knight onto this uh, f6 place where uh, d7 and uh, the other knight uh, will come in from the d7 to defend uh, at uh, what what the scale is, sorry uh, f6 square it becomes obvious that from as early as move 4 you have have more than one decent option to say stay flexible within your opening now friends have a look at the advanced variation uh, so from this position <coughs> white advances his e4 pawn and that is why it is called an advanced variation it's probably the line which offers the most scope for improvement for both sides over the ne next years as it's also it's also the most complicated line as well so here uh, black immediately wants to challenge the white center as he does in the french defense so c5 yet the black light square uh, developers is still free to move outside the pawn chain uh, the downside of this variation is that black lost a tempo on playing uh, c6 and then c7 and then c6 first and only then c6 and c5 so so bishop f5 is a better option uh, this is the main move for the black however it is highly theoretical and white can decide the nature of the game uh, he can play aggressive with an early g4 uh, as more positional uh, with knight f3 um, knight f3 uh, um, yeah this one let me show you both the lines up uh, so say if white plays knight f3 then e6 and then bishop e2 uh, preparing for the castle so here and you uh, the black can develop uh, his bishop on b4 and when white uh, uh, defends the check by uh, by c3 uh, the bishop can be retreated back to a5 Knight can be developed at d7 and as in most Karo Khan variations and challenging this pawn from uh, f6. So let's go back and see if you if the white plays g4 then attacking the bishop and bishop will settle on to uh, g6 uh, keeping an eye on this diagonal and again as I've shown you from the uh, classical variation uh, queen can be developed uh, either on c c7 or c6 uh, the knight can go on to the d7 uh, and even uh, e6 at some stage and then this bishop can uh, control this uh, f f4 f8 diagonal so that was the, the advanced variation for you guys. Uh, let's have a look at the exchange variation. What happens in the exchange variation? So in exchange pos uh, variation, uh, from this position, uh, when white plays d5, uh, black plays d5, here e, takes, here e takes d5 and c takes d5. Um, this looks rather harmless at first glance, but it definitely carries some bite in it. 
uh, with new and fresh ideas for white like to e1 attacking onto this file in the classical line black has to be careful to not underestimate this variation uh, bishop d3 is the main line here this move introduces the classical line in the exchange variation and other option is c4 uh, this move introduces the pan of botwinic attack black needs to know what to do here as the variation is quite dynamic black develops a piece and overprotects the pawn on d5 by knight f6 in order to recapture the d5 uh, with the nature uh, with the knight uh, not with the queen and knight to c3 puts more pressure onto the d5 pawn so so friends let's have a look at bishop d3 first so knight c3 white puts pressure on the d5 pawn and then c3 preventing uh, defending the pawn at d5 queen to c7 this is an important move to prevent white from playing bishop to f4 the old main line goes to a knight f6 but the white might have slight edge after a bishop f4 so so knight to e2 so basically what white is trying to do is to renew the threat of bishop f4 so the best move here for the black is uh, bishop g4 pinning the knight and thus preventing uh, bishop f4 here castles for the white and e6 so black can focus on his development uh, bishop to uh, d6 is possible knight to f6 is also possible even castles on the queen side uh, or king side is also possible let's have a look at c4 this move introduces the pan of botwinic attack uh, as i explained uh, earlier uh, black needs to know what to do here as this variation is quite dynamic uh, knight f6 should be played from the black uh, and over protects the pawn at d5 and so knight c3 uh, white puts pressure on the d5 pawn and then g6 uh, this is the only the third most played move according to the databases uh, the main moves for black are knight c6 and e6 <clears throat> and if white captures uh, d5 uh, you should play g7 and then bishop b5 check which should be defended by knight b7 b7 yes so from this position friends uh, white has an option to play d6 and if black captures uh, with e takes d6 then uh, queen e2 check may come which needs to be only defended by a queen to e7 and if captures the queen then black may have lost the right to castle here so friends that was the advanced variation uh, in karokan defense now friends let's have a look at the karokan's fantasy variation so in fantasy variation uh, white plays d4 and black plays d5 but instead of capturing with e pawn black white plays f3 the strange looking move introduces the fantasy variation in her excellent opening book uh, wgm joan kahuska writes about the pros and cons of this f3 move despite first appearances f3 does have the same positional basis to it after all top grandmasters have played the fantasy variation and can and one can safely say that a strong grandmaster rarely plays positionally suspect openings so in this variation black basically captures 
uh, the e4 pawn uh, with this d4 even though this capture allows the white to free the f3 square and it leads to more open positions uh, it's a sensible way uh, to black to counter white setup uh, there are other options for black but they will lead to a quite complicated play so from this position e5 is the most logical move as it it attacks onto this uh, d5 pawn and if with both queen and the pawn and if you capture it uh, white can simply exchanges the queen where white will lose the, the his right to castle so usually in this position uh, black counters the uh, to the center by knight f3 and then bishop g4 uh, pinning the knight so this move is also recommended by several opening sources for black black pins the knight on to the f3 and bishop to c4 white is focusing on his development and develops his pieces very very actively and knight to d7 uh, I'm protecting the the pawn at e5 and then castles for the white so knight to g6 and c3 from the black where black develops his bishop uh, to d6 so that's how white uh, completes black completes his development all of his minor pieces are developed uh, th th he's just one move away to castle and then he can pl uh, plan his attack so in this variation black uh, black's queen can go on to c7 uh, um, basically uh, double the force uh, to attack on this pawn uh, the light square bishop can come on to this g6 and then uh, control this diagonal and the a pawn can advance from the queen side that's all for today in the next episode of caro can we will look at the accelerated pan of attack and the king's indian attack so uh, keep do subscribe my channel uh, for the other tutorials uh, do like this video if you find it helpful Till then, take care. Bye-bye.